the next talk is that of Peter Arkadiev. And uh, Peter will speak about um, a, a very interesting matter, actually, called result which is passive, a view from non-passive cohesion. Thank you. So, um, I'm not using the PowerPoint, and while, while the head of this is being distributed, I will start by introducing the problem and, and languages. So, Northwest Caucasian languages, like basically North Caucasian languages in general, are believed to lack passive constructions whatsoever, and this is reflected in, in both in classic typological works like Klimov's and Klimov and Alexeyev's Typology of Kafkaski Kuzakov and and the standard reference like Wolves. Um, however, I will present some evidence tentatively suggesting that uh, there is some kind of passive-like constructions in these languages um, developing from resolutive constructions. Um, and this is interesting in particular because this sort of development is something fairly, fairly well known from from more or less trivial European languages like Baltic and Slavic and Germanic. Um, so, just to remind you, some there are some classic, classic definitions and observations on consultative, passive, and uh, their connections mainly from Nidalkov and Yakhandov's classic verb. So, resultative is a verb form that expresses a state implying a previous event, and in particular I will be focusing on what is called objective or P-oriented resultative, that is a resultative where the underlying subject of the state is co-referential with the underlying object or patient of the preceding action, so like the door is open, is opened, uh, whereas the passive, as Nidialkov and Yachantov again define it, are verb forms of constructions which indicate that a surface subject doesn't encode the agent, and the passive, they say, involves a change in the emphasis, but no change in the notational meaning. Therefore, basically, by the passive, um, so, so to say, sensu stricto, they understand the actual passive only, not the stable passive. So the stable passive is more or less synonymous with objective resultative, whereas actual passive is something which denotes the same situation as the, as the basic transitive clause with uh, all agentive and dynamic components of the situation expressed, but with the grammatical roles of the participant redistributed. Um, and again, it is very well known that that resultative, based on transitive verbs, the objective resultative uh, and uh, the passive are related uh, both in terms of diathesis and in terms of diachronic origins of the passive, which is uh, frequently, well, at, well, at least. Uh, very well known uh, based on, on uh, resultatives. And I will argue that Northwest Caucasian languages present another yet uh, undocumented case of such a development. So, very briefly about the Northwest Caucasian languages. This is one of the three indigenous fa language families of the Caucasus with three branches, Abhaz, Abaza. Uh, Sankasian and the extinct Ubih, and I will present evidence from uh, the both leaving, leaving branches, uh, mainly from the Bjadug dialect of Sankasian, the Kuban dialect of Kabardian, and the Tapanta dialect of Abaza. And uh, to be honest, uh, two years ago I spoke about more or less the same topic only on the basis of Sankasian, uh, and here I have new data from Abaza, and this uh, partly corroborates my previous findings and partly supplements them by uh, another yet quite interesting uh, and topologically uh, revealing, as 
I hope to argue uh, instance of such a development. And all my data comes from fieldwork conducted from 2014 to 2018. So, um, the major topolo relevant topological features of, of the Northwest Caucasian languages are summarized on pages on the bottom of, from the bottom of page one until page three. So, most importantly, they are polysynthetic uh, and encode all the argument structure of the clause on the main verb by means of pronominal prefixes, uh, as well as possess a large number of various uh, affixal means to express uh, aspect, tense, modality, and other, and other sorts of meanings. Uh, the general schema of the Northwest Caucasian verbal complex is given in table one on the top of page two, just for your orientation. There are a couple of textual examples showing fairly complex verbal forms. Um, in terms of valency-related operations, these languages are very well known for, for having rich systems of valency increasing me, uh, devices such as causatives, applicatives, etc., but generally uh, very poor in valency decreasing operations. Uh, importantly, these languages are morphologically and at least partly syntactically ergative. Uh, in all these languages, this is manifested in pronominal marking on verbs, which is shown in Table 2 and the uh, examples in 3. I'm not going to discuss it in any detail, just please keep it in, keep it in mind. Um, and Circassian languages also have ergatively based case marking. Uh, and in addition to the core cases, which we call the absolutive and the oblique, the oblique is a general case for everything, for all arguments which are not absolutive, uh, ergatives and indirect objects alike. Uh, both branches also have polyfunctional instrumental case or uh, marking variety of non cross reference, non core arguments as shown in 5 and 6, and this will become important later when we will discuss uh, passive-like constructions. And while the normal way of backgrounding the agent of the event <coughs> is simply by means of, uh, of a generic or non-referential third-person plural. So the, if you don't know the agent and don't want to say anything about it, just use the regular transitive verb with a third person plural prefix and it's okay, so I can seven from Vesirkosian and eight from Abaza. Um, and that could be all, but there are further ways of backgrounding the agent which are, are relevant for our purposes. And last but not least, uh, these languages have fairly complex tense systems, and in particular, in Abhaz and Abaza, there is a morphological distinction between static and dynamic verbs manifested in the affixes used, uh, used to encode uh, present, mostly present and past tenses, and uh, this will become important immediately when I will turn to resultatives. Uh, so, uh, in both Circassian and Abaza, resultatives are static, uh, static predicates uh, derived from dynamic verbs, uh, and the common characteristic feature is that they lack the ergative agent prefix. Uh, otherwise, they are not exactly the same in two branches, in particular because in Circassian, resultatives always possess, all, are always, uh, always contain the regular past perfective or preterite tense marker, like in 9. So, uh, in 9, Tapsincho, Le is a uh, transitive verb with an ergative agent, uh, meaning roasted, we quickly roasted the meat, and the final marker, uh, uh, 
is the past tense marker, the perfective past tense marker. However, uh, in the B example, we see the resultative der regere, and here there is no agent marker, one, and two, uh, this, the very same past tense marker, re, uh, the final vowel can sometimes be omitted, but this is a more phonological process, uh, no longer denotes past tense, it denotes, uh, well, it's a part of the resultative construction. Uh, by contrast, in Abaza, um, there isn't any dedicated or, well, any sort of, of uh, overt marking of the resultative, except uh, that it's a transitive verb which lacks the ergative prefix, and uh, it's an, it inflects like a static verb. So in 10a, abhuspa ajira altid, the girl opened the door, we see a transitive verb with the ergative prefix lo before the root, and the uh, declarative aorist uh, ending in de, whereas in 10b, ashitib, we see the same root, but n there isn't any agent marker there, and uh, the tense marker, b, uh, tells us that this is a static present tense. Um, importantly, due to the lack of any dedicated morphology, it is virtually impossible to automatically extract resultatives from any kind of corpora, which is very regretful. Um, and therefore, most of the examples below are elicited. So, um, in the remaining 10 minutes, I have to tell quite a lot of things. Well, you can take five more minutes. Yeah, probably. Well, in, very briefly, in the Circassian resultatives, as I have said, <coughs> uh, they contain the preterite marker. However, uh, this preterite suffix doesn't have past and reference. First, resultatives denote uh, situations simultaneous to speech time when they simply have this marker re or a uh, as in uh, Kabardian. Um, as in examples 13 and 14 at the bottom of page 4. And oh sorry, and as in example 12. And if uh, if you need to express non-present reference like past or future, then you simply attach the respective tense marker to the result of the form. Uh, it looks like it is a tense marker, uh, like another past marker or a future marker attached to the past marker. Uh, however, uh, it can be argued that this marker is simply resultative and not, not past anymore, as shown in example 13 and 14. Um, and resultative predicates in Circassian may attach certain aspectual modal affixes, uh, as shown in 15 and 16, which can never attach to the same marker when it functions as the past tense. So it can be argued that, uh, that mm, well, if you like, that uh, the same marker re occupies different structural positions when it functions as a resultative and as the perfective post. Um, anyway, this is not the main point of, of my talk. So, um, now let's look what, what happens when, uh, when the resultative starts behaving as a passive and how this can be diagnosed. So, a canonical resultative denotes a state and so it is supposed to suppress the agentive and dynamic components of the basic situation uh, and this is, can be tested 
by the compatibility or incompatibility of the result of it with certain expressions, such as adverbials, whose interpretation depends on such components. So, for instance, uh, in English, it is argued that it's possible to say the door has been closed quickly, or the door has been closed with purpose, showing the passive. However, it's not possible to say things that the door is closed quickly, or the door is closed on purpose, because is closed is what is called ejectival passive or resultative. Um, however, when I started testing this with the native speakers of Circassian and Abaza, it quickly turned out that they are in fact allow the resultative co to combine with a whole array of expressions referring to the dynamic phases of the situation, and the only uh, the only dialect for which I have consistent consistent uh, negative replies is the Tamigo dialect of the Circassian. However, I have consulted only one native speaker who is incidentally uh, a, a member of the staff of this institute, so I don't really think that her judgments are particularly reliable. Anyway, um, in a, a table 5 shows, uh, more or less shows a distribution of various um, adverbial expressions, um, and this, and there are examples from uh, Jadou, Kuban, and Abaza, uh, uh, showing each of uh, uh, of the of the cells of the table. So, um, what is well, what is important is like it's um, well, examples like 19, such uh, for instance, the letter was written in 15 minutes. It's uh, uh, expressions like in 15 minutes uh, uh, refer uh, to the to the duration of the event, not to the duration of the state. So it's. Uh, if uh, they are compatible with a particular form, this means that this form does not denote only the state. And likewise, uh, likewise, uh, examples like, um, for instance, 24, the dishes were washed willingly. Likewise, um, uh, since willingly refers to the agentive uh, component of the situation to, to, to the agent's intentions, this means that uh, the verbal form, the predicate, uh, can also refer to, 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 uh, to the agentive component, that it's not 100% uh, uh, suppressed or grounded. And finally, uh, probably most importantly for the passive analysis, uh, at least Bjaduk and Abaza allow uh, to express the agent uh, of the event by means of the instrumental uh, phrase. So in 26 from Bjaduk, this book was written by a famous writer, or 27 from Abaza, the keys have been, literally are, found by some guy. Uh, the native speakers allowed to, allow to use the resultative with the uh, overt agent phrase. So, um, a note of caveat is that neither of, the, of, of these contexts uh, trigger an anonymous reaction of my consultants. So there are many cases where, where native speakers say that, one native speaker says that for one particular example that this is okay, and another native speaker says that this example is bad, and the first native speaker says the other example is bad, uh, even though even though it looks like pretty the same as the the example he or she uh, approved of uh, uh, previously. However, um, it is uh, the results are more or less robust. It is not the case that that uh, only one of seven consultants agreed reluctantly to admit this or that example. It's not the case. Uh, all of these examples are, have been confirmed by at least two or three native speakers, and 
Uh, so this, these patterns do not seem to be entirely accidental. Um, so the second interesting case comes from Abaza only, and yes, I'm afraid I'll have to take some more minutes. So Abaza is more intricate than Circassian in that in addition to the passive flag uses of the plain resultative, which are not always attested by speakers, Abaza features a construction for which the diagnostic, these diagnostic contexts actually work better, not 100% okay, but better. Um, and this construction is a inceptive, is the inceptive derivative of the resultative. Uh, it's, the inceptive is formed by the suffix ha. The inceptive is a dynamic predicate, so it mm, but it can be seen that it is derived from the from the resultative because it still lacks the agent prefix, and it's not possible to attach the inceptive to a regular verb. The inceptive attaches to well to what can be called nouns or adjectives and to stative verbs in these languages, but not to dynamic verbs. So it is clear that the inceptive is based on the resultative. And um, actually, my consultants, regardless of whether they uh, accept or reject the passive like uses of the plain resultative, tend to accept uh, the inceptive in, in context referring to the dynamic aspects of the situation, including the, the um, reference to the agent. So, uh, like in example 36. Uh, the dishes were washed by the children, where the inceptive is okay, whereas the plain resultative is not always okay, and even uh, even example 36 with the Abaza style uh, question uh, question formation targeting the the um, demoted uh, agent. So, uh, what kind of conclusions can be drawn from, from this data? Um, well, first of all, the two paths of development from the objective resulted in the simple statal passive to actual passive, which I have uh, shown above for Northwest Caucasian languages, that is the extension <coughs> of the result of the proper without any sort of uh, extra marking, and the, what can be called a dy dynamicization of the resultative by an inceptive operator, certified immediate parallels in the European languages such as German, Baltic, and Slavic, which have been amply described in the literature. So, uh, on the one hand, in such languages as Russian and Lithuanian, constructions with auxiliary B and the passive post participle are systematically ambiguous between resultative and actual passive, um, as shown in 38 uh, for Russian and 39 uh, for Lithuanian. And please pay attention to example 39 because its translations will figure below. Uh, by contrast, in Polish, Latvian, and German, the distinction between the resultative uh, and the actual passive is formally mark marked by the choice of the stative versus inceptive auxiliary, which is best known for German, the distinction between Zustandspassiv and, and um, oh, uh, Vorgangspassiv, thank you, uh, like Gestern noch war doch ein Schild angebracht, which is the resultative, and gestern noch wurde dort ein Schild angebracht, which is the actual passive. Um, and more or less the same works for Latvian with be ja als leg, dass the door was locked, and dicker als leg, dass the door became locked, or has been locked by someone, or, or Polish with the auxiliaries yes and uh, uh, which and such, and 
uh, interestingly and predictably, uh, in this particular context, Abaza shows a fully parallel distinction between the plane resultative and the inceptive, as in for the three. So H2, the door is open, uh, whereas, but I don't know when it wo was opened, was opened. Uh, Jan Tra has the inceptive marker, and it's not possible to substitute the inceptive by the plane resultative. Unfortunately, I don't have um, the parallel example for any Circassian variety, but I have a suspicion that that they would rather use the third person plural agent <coughs> transitive construction rather than the any sort of resultative. Anyway, um, I will skip a possibly highly relevant passage about German and come to the very, very conclusion. So, um, well, very briefly, the extension of the Northwest Caucasian resultative into the passive domain might have to do with the influence from Russian. Um, However, I don't have, I don't have, um, I actually don't know how this can be proved uh, or rejected, but it's an obvious idea, but probably it's not yet possible to, to, to provide conclusive evidence for this. However, anyway, I think that this material is uh, Theoretically and topologically <coughs> relevant because it offers a window into the initial stages of the transition between the resultative proper and the passive, as well as into the micro variation which can be attested in this domain. And also, uh, it shows the role of uh, optional modifiers which which can diagnose this this process. Uh, which is often manifest mainly in semantic extensions rather than in any uh, clearly visible morphosyntactic changes. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. So we've got about three minutes for questions. Yes. Uh, it is remarkable that, uh, that uh, in 36 and 37, uh, your agents are uh, an instrumental and not, for example, an early. Would you analyze them as arguments for just some agents expressing a more general, maybe a semantic role of cause or something? Um, well, I think it, it, well, it's not remarkable that they are not in the ergative because uh, they can't be in the ergative since in order to be in the ergative in the oblique case, uh, well, in Abaza there isn't any case anyway, but uh, regardless, in order, to, in order to be in the core case, uh, they have to be the argument has to be cross-reference on the verb, mm -hmm. and this is not possible uh, with the resultative or its derivatives anyway. Um, well, technically, I would not analyze them as arguments because if the argument versus adjunct distinction for these languages is uh, defined then it's defined on the basis of cross-reference. So things which are not cross-reference on the verb are not arguments. And certainly it's possible to omit the, omit, uh, omit the, omit the instrumental phrase if it's uh, not necessary, so to say. So mm, I would argue that they are adjuncts. Yes, and that is connected uh, to my second question. So. Uh, uh, as for the non accusative languages, we will know uh, towards which goal those resultative uh, mm, constructions may have they evolved. But there, uh, what are your predictions? Uh, this, uh, mm, linguistics so doesn't the, have uh, linguistics uh, doesn't have predictive uh, power, you know. So if they uh, move towards some 
uh, actual passive construction. So, uh, will, will they maybe uh, just uh, evolve in a regular transitive clause and eventually uh, acquire a primitive first reference? Uh, um. What are the technological predictions? Because, uh, uh, you know, uh, I. I don't think I don't see myself in a position to ask, to answer this this sort of question. Mm. Okay. So it's uh, not entirely clear. Uh, so well, anyway, well, anyway, I beg your pardon. Well, why should well, even if uh, even if these constructions evolve into a sort of a regularly used passive, I don't see any reasons whatsoever. For them to further develop into into uh, into anything else, it's well unless something happens and uh, and uh, uh, ogative uh, ogative uh, morphology of these languages somehow breaks down, but there doesn't seem to be any prerequisites for it whatsoever, and there are plenty of languages which are. Which have which are both morphologically ergative and have passives, so I don't see any any point it's in. It's an agent in instrumental yeah. even. Yeah. So. So I'm there's afraid we've got only time for a very very small question, question. Yes, and was it was oh? maybe Asia because she wanted to oh. yeah. to ask you before. Uh, yes, please. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for the mm -hmm. interesting talk. I'm, I'm very curious about the point you made at the end of the talk, that this might be influenced from Russia. And I was wondering if you can elaborate how such influence could occur uh, when we talk about a syntactic construction, I guess, an offer syntactic construction. Mm. Well, I'm not sure I have. I, I'm not sure I have time for it. But, but uh, well, since since in Russian, uh, since in Russian the resultative and the passive uh, look more or less the same, uh, and differ in differ in their semantics and combinatorial possibilities, it could be the case that that the native speakers of these languages who are all fluent in Russian. Uh, and have some exposure and have plenty of exposure to, to Russian texts, especially Russian official texts where the passive is used, they could, well, they could, they, they know that, that uh, their own resultative is corresponds to the Russian resultative, but they also know that, that the Russian resultative uh, can also be used as the passive, and hence they could, well, the, 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 the mechanism, this, this is just a simple, <laughs> um, Simple mechanism of pattern borrowing, where they extend their 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 own native construction on the basis of of uh, the constructions from their second language. However, uh, this doesn't seem to work very well for the Abazar inceptive based resultative. And anyway, I think that this sort of argument can only be made on the basis of extensive corpus data, and this is yet not really accessible. Okay. So thank, thank you. you.